Welcome, everybody. This is Activities Across Grade Levels. Guest speakers, this is going to be a, an advice-heavy activities across grade levels. And usually, we've got a fairly good mix of tools and advice. We've got some cool resources and tools to show you, but, but a whole lot of advice to share. So first of all, lots of thanks to pass out, because that's a good life skill to know that you should be doing such stuff. Uh, Fowler USD, it's here for Susan's District. Yeah, excellent. Uh, and then also to Richard Byrne at Free Tech for Teachers, who helps us get the word out for these shindigs. And if you have not been to his site, please go. Lots and lots of good material there for you. He and I do a webinar on Fridays at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern called Two Ed Tech Guys Take Questions and Share Cool Stuff. And we would love to have you join us then. Now, uh, there are some other groups out there worth saying hey to. Uh, ISTE, uh, the International Society for Technology and Education, if you have not been there and gotten involved in the ISTE Commons area, there's loads and loads of good advice there. You can post questions and get some really good answers quickly with the large group that is connected there. FETC, Florida Educational, not Florida, sorry, the Future of Education Technology Conference, and, um, and all of the good that they do. So they have a big conference every every January, typically in Orlando, and uh, one, one, of the, one of the really great ed tech gatherings in the country. Susan, tell us about this one. Oh my goodness, so CVQ, which is the Q affiliate in the Central Valley of California where I'm from, we are putting on a free learning event this weekend. We have about 44 sessions, free, free, free for teachers. Uh, we're offering things on social emotional learning. We have a lot of great math resources that are gonna be available. It's all Star Wars themed because you know, Monday is May the 4th and we're gonna have a closing keynote. You know, Josh Harris is doing the closing keynote on Monday, his very first time, very excited. And we have a good message. Um, but again, if you've just had a chance to, you know, wanna get some new learning, check out the list, cvq.org. Register for free. We're giving away prizes too because CBQ is a nonprofit organization. We, um, whatever we make on things, we turn back around and give them to teachers. So show up, uh, attend a session, attend eight sessions. That's the great thing about these uh, virtual events is you can go when it's convenient for you or go to just the one thing that really speaks to you. So please join us. Uh, register at cvq.org. I'll put that in the chat too. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And by the way, that, that's an inspired graphic for the thing. That's just, just so many extra pieces there that were just, just beautiful. We want to say hello to everybody who is watching this recording. Uh, and let's start by having Susan introduce herself. So Susan on the left. That's me. I am Susan Stewart. Um, I'm an instructional technology teacher on special set specialist. I meant to say that one five times fast, right? Uh, or a TOSA. Uh, I like to call myself a tech coach. You can find me on Twitter at Tech Coach Susan. See how original like Susan, tech coach. <laughs> um, I support 120 amazing teachers in Fowler, California. Uh, prior to being a tech coach, I was a kindergarten and second grade teacher for 15 years. So a lot of my experience come from, comes from early childhood and early elementary. And my name is Rushton Hurley. I am a former high school teacher of Japanese language. Uh, and then I became a principal of a K-12 school. I was principal of an online high school in the early O's, a set of experiences that became quite valuable to me quite recently, as you might guess. And now I run a little nonprofit called Next Vista for Learning. Nextvista.org has a library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all screen content, my own little attempt to save the universe from ignorance, one creative video at a time. Thank you very much. Now, uh, you'll find in, those, in that library videos about how to learn different things, about communities around the world, about service to others. We also have videos uh, for careers. We have videos for uh, those who are learning English uh, as a non-native language. And we're trying to build the largest collection of free videos for uh, English language learners anywhere in the world. So if you're interested in any of that, just stay in touch with me. The whole idea of these webinars is to keep the learning going, right? So dedicated teachers all over are, are in, in major high gear creative mode in that space of like, how do we make different things happen? How do I, how do I keep kids engaged in, in what it means to be in class? I mean, maybe you're a teacher who's in a, in a space where the kids have been told, you can keep the grade you got when we went to shelter in place. Now, there are some, there are some solid reasons for that, although I would actually engage in a longer discussion and say that it's not ideal. Nevertheless, how do you get those kids engaged, right? And uh, I think one of the things that you can do comes down to what we will tell you about today. How this is gonna work is we're gonna, we're gonna make our way through the grade levels and talking about some of the different pieces of advice. 
Uh, but, but when we talk about guest speakers, we're talking about giving kids a chance to see possibilities they haven't seen before. And so as we jump into this, we're going to start with our young learners. And so Susan is going to tell us a little bit about, about things you should be thinking about related to guest speakers with your young learners. And Susan, let's get it going. Awesome. So when you talk about young ones, you know, they have this really um, self perspective. That's what's developmentally appropriate. What, what, what's a developmentally appropriate is themselves. That's what they know. So bringing in families, things like parents and grandparents is appropriate at that young age. So when you're talking about guests, maybe it's just grandma coming in and reading, or maybe it is, you know, a parent who has an interesting job that really you know, keeps it about them and that's the sphere of influence that they're familiar with is their family, right? Have them come in, siblings, read stories. Now in this environment here, we, you know, in this remote learning environment, we could have guest speakers in the sense that when you're having your synchronous learning time, maybe you're having a Google Meet, um, just bringing in the family and taking advantage of that environment they're in. You know, maybe mom will come in and read the story to the class. It doesn't always have to be the teacher doing the teaching. Maybe we can just bring in the family members as well. Um, I, in my community, uh, we actually have a dentist who does regular virtual field trips with his phone. So he wants to be able to engage the community. He wants to bring kids in to see the office and learn about, especially during February when we're doing dental hygiene month, right? Uh, but the thing is managing moving 22 little ones over to the dentist office that, you know, disrupts his schedule. Uh, there's patient privacy that has to be considered, but people want to see the cools and, you know, the cool tools and they want to be engaged in that. So what he does is I think it's about once a month, he does a little virtual field trip and he just walks around his, his office. He meets his, this is my hygienist. This is so-and-so and he shows the tools and he'll bring it up and he goes, ah, you know, he has a lot of fun with them. One that brings down dental anxiety, like people who are afraid of the dentist, you know, he makes it fun and engaging, but it, let, it lets them have that opportunity to do a tour without actually having to take them there. So it's a great thing he's been doing for years. And so those kinds of experiences right now would be more appropriate than ever. Um, also, uh, our pizza factory, our lo local pizza factory, it's a very common thing at the end of the year for the kids to take a walking field trip to the pizza factory because it's fun. We talk, they talk about the big giant things of flour and they teach them how to make things. Well, our pizza factory was talking like, oh, we had to cancel all the made field trips. That's like just as a common kindergarten rite of passage is your field trip to the pizza factory. So they're doing how to bake pizza lessons with just a phone. And he was like, so he has them held a little webinar and he's like, okay, do you have some flour? And it's, it's been fun. It's been a riot to watch how someone from our community is trying to continue something. So he's been the guest and he's teaching people how to make pizza classes, how to make pizza right from the pizza factory. So Susan, a question about that. When, when we talk about these folks in the community doing these things, did, did they step forward to say they were going to do it? Or did you reach out to them or somebody in the school system reach out to them? What, what got them to the point where they were willing to do this? So I think a um, uh, great example with the Pizza Factory family, that's it's years, 20 years, kindergarten field trips in May to the Pizza Factory. So I think it was just like, they miss it too. And so they wanted to connect. So I'm not exactly sure if it was we went to them or they went to us, but someone said, you know, pivot, we're going to keep doing this. It's just going to look a little different. So I, so we've been doing that for so long that I don't even know it's such a relationship, you know, the kindergarten and the pizza factory field trip, it's a thing. And then the dentist as well, I think it became a, a, a privacy thing more than anything because we got page patients and going in and out. So it's probably been about three years that I think that doctor has been doing that too. So um, I don't, actually, I don't know whose idea it was, but it was a great one, right? <laughs> um, so we do things when we do some of that, whether it's a guest speaker, some of those extra tips we might do with the young ones is give them roles ahead of time because we don't want to be just sitting back going, listening. We want them to be actively engaged in it. So sometimes we'll prepare the students with a, with a list of questions and have them rehearse speaking those questions aloud. So when it's time, okay, do you guys have questions for, you know, Dr. Jones? And so they'll go through and they'll have their little question cards. They'll have practice speaking them aloud. So when it's time for question, it's not like crickets, right? Everyone has prepared their, with their questions. When we're doing it in class, when we do it, like when the ports program comes, there's always a greeter says, welcome to our class, welcome to room. And so that the greeter will tell them where they're from, like we're in California, where are you from? So we pray, prepare the kids for some of those like interview skills, right? Being able to talk and speak to other adults is definitely a skill that our young learners can develop to be able to ask a question, to look at someone, to you know have that kind of dialogue. So we can do it all virtually too. Very, very cool stuff. You were talking about like the, uh, the, the thankers as well. Yeah, 
like at the end, it'd be, you know, just the, the gratitude. Thanks for visiting our class. We really appreciate it. Maybe that person just says at the end, again, it's kind of setting up roles ahead of time and they, they just to say goodbye. Thank you. You know, close it up. Is there ever an issue with the kids are so focused on asking their question or, or, or fulfilling a line or saying a line as a part of their role that they have trouble kind of focusing on what's happening? No, I, I haven't seen that too much. I think it is good to have them practice the question so that when it's their turn, they're not like, uh, 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 uh. So I think we practice it enough that it hasn't been an issue that I've, you know, but every kid is different. You have little nuances with kiddos and how they are, but it's kind of like telling the kid ahead of time, the student ahead of time, you're going to read paragraph three. They're gone, right? The whole time because all their focus is on paragraph three. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Let's get us up to upper elementary. I know you've got some advice for, uh, for folks who are, are teaching that level. Why don't you jump in on that? So one thing that is really great, and we haven't, we haven't yet had a, found the way to shift this to virtuals, but, but we do have um, our district attorney reading program. So from the people from the DA office, they come into the school once a month and they just read. But we, um, they talk about their field a little bit, but they're there just to do story time. Because sometimes in the rural schools, people don't imagine you know, careers beyond what are you going to do when you grow up? I'm going to work at Walmart or I'm going to work at McDonald's. So just giving them some exposure to other careers and the district attorneys talk about the work they do in law. And, you know, part of it is just talk about making good choices, but also they do the thing where you can do this too. And so they try to bring in some um, people from diverse populations to make sure that our kids are seeing kids that look like them in those experiences. And they can see here's someone who's successful, someone who's, and they come in and they just read. And so every month we have district attorneys that come in and read to us. So that's been a really great kind of guest because it does, you know, just gives our kids exposure, exposure to different um, careers. And then the ports, let me talk about ports. So I'm super excited. I mentioned the CVQ thing this weekend. And there was kind of a reason for that. One of the port speakers is presenting at CVQ this weekend. So it's gonna be a whole hour session describing what they do. So you can go to, uh, ports and you see their website. They've got a number of virtual activities they're, they're offering. But this weekend at CVQ, one of the session will be a gentleman from Ports who's going to be talking about what, he, what, what Ports does for teachers. So teachers can interview him and ask him. And so a whole session about what the Ports program is providing for classrooms right now in both traditional education and now that we're in distance learning. So that's really awesome. Um, and being, you know, showing gratitude is always a great thing. So we do have them write thank you letters. But with the older elementary kids, sometimes I involve them in making the invitation. Like, who do you want to talk to? What would be interesting? Do we, how could we find someone to do that? And have them maybe help draft the email or messages um, to invite the guests as well. I, I love it when kids get the, the opportunity to be part of that level of communication, because until someone invites them into that process, they see it as something that others do. And as long as, and that's true for anything, right? As long as they see it as something others do, they're not naturally going to be in the space of, I'm capable of doing that until it's like, how about you do that? And then that, that changes things quite dynamically. All right, guys, we're gonna jump up to middle school, but wait, wait, and high school. Wow, so much of the advice related to guest speakers is something that actually flows along with, with both. So we're gonna, we're gonna handle both as a part of what we do over the coming minutes. Now. When we think about speakers, okay, so Susan was talking very specifically about, you know, the, the folks in your community, and that is, that's a really good move. As you, as you go through these pieces, you'll see that all of that advice for the, the young, youngest students and for our upper elementary, it applies. It applies to the middle and high schoolers as well. They need to know the people in their community. They need to know that there are these good folks who run a pizza place. There are these good folks who who do dental work. There's this, you know, district attorney person. I didn't know what attorney was until class today. I mean, just those moments when, when they get a chance to get a sense of there is this larger community beyond the school and maybe a few other people that they encounter, that's helpful. Now, that means that you've got a load of people that you can turn to when you're thinking about who can be a speaker. If you had asked uh, most of the population, say two months ago, could you connect with me via Zoom or some other video chat tool? Most would be like, what, right? But now, of course, loads of people understand what it means to do this, which has expanded your audience of speakers, you know, something fierce, right? Uh, and know very specifically that, that there's no real geographic boundary. So if you know somebody in another part of the country, maybe somebody who has an accent, I mean, the, the folks that I grew up with in Southern Arkansas, 
we talk differently there than, than we talk out here. I mean, that's just kind of how that is. And, and it, it's really good for them to, to hear somebody else speak, you know, you hear somebody like from a, uh, you know, a New England accent, getting them the chance to hear people from different places is really good for their sense of, of the larger world. It's one thing to, to try to show them on a map where places are. It's another thing to be able to connect to, you know, that person we had talking to us about fill in the blank, that changes things. So uh, how do you reach out to these people? Well, if, if you know them, I mean, if you got their address, email address, fine, right? If you can give them a call, easy. However, the truth is that you can reach out to anybody. And I belong to an online rotary club. It's a service club, service above self. We do you know, all kinds of things for communities near and far, things like that. And, and I find speakers for our club all the time just because I encountered them somewhere online. Maybe I saw a TED talk or TEDx talk or something like that, yeah? And maybe I read an article that was posted somewhere. And I thought, that sounds really interesting. And I'll just do a little bit of sleuthing, right? Google the name, Google the organization. Hey, hey it looks like there is a website right here. Ooh, look, they have a contact us page. And you know, about every other time or so that I put something out, these people write back. And they'll write back and say, hey, yeah, you know, like, uh, I'd, I'd be very happy to speak to your club. This is going to be true for you and your students as well. Because if you've heard of some person doing an interesting thing, and you reach out to them and say, I'm just wondering, you know, would, would you be willing to speak to my class? Uh, all we'd have to do is co connect for about, say, 20, 25 minutes total. And anytime that's convenient for you, you know, like in this range, when, when, when I connect with the kids, blah, blah, blah. You can get some fantastic speakers that way. Just don't be shy, right? You know, oh, that person is, you know, famous you know, and do it, right? I mean, just reach out. And, and I would contend this, know that you are, in, in, a, in a fashion, you are representing all of us, right? When, whenever you reach out to someone, think professionally because sometimes teachers don't. They, they think, oh, I'm just a teacher. No, we have these wildly cool and important jobs and, and our, our work is meaningful every day. And so actually we're doing just fine. But should we get a pay raise? Yes, but that's different. What we wanna do is we wanna be able to say, I teach kids, I'm, I'm, I'm working to inspire them to see these possibilities. It would be wonderful to have you speak to them for a few minutes and let them ask you some questions. Would you have time? At worst, they won't respond, whatever. You know, I mean, if you send out enough of these, it won't matter because the more often you can get these people in, the better off uh, it, it is. Because the, these are memorable moments. With my creative solutions for the Global Good class that I teach with uh, Rita Lee up at Sarah High School, and we have had some amazing speakers this year. And, and it all comes that way. I just reached out and said, hey, would, would you be willing to talk to my creative solutions for the Global Good class? Of course, the name's interesting, which is kind of fun as well. But see, there you go. Now, once you've connected with somebody, what do you do? Um, I'm going to give you some some you know, down the weeds advice on, on, on this stuff right here. So, so here we go. Remember, by the way, you, you don't have to like take notes uh, for every last thing. You'll get the slides uh, if you want them. And there is a recording of this that will be available if you want to watch it on our webinars page. And if you register and, and all of you who are like joining us right now have, I'll send you an email that says, hey, here's the page to go to. We've got the video up. You can get to the slides, links in the chat, blah, blah, blah. So, so you know. Now, Two things that I think are really important uh, when, when you think about getting a, a speaker ready to do a good job for you, because sometimes they come in and do a good job and sometimes they don't, but you can optimize that chance. First of all, will the tech be okay? So that person may or may not be savvy with Zoom or, or Meet or Skype or whatever it may be, because it doesn't really matter as long as it works, right? Um, and, and what you do is you connect with them ahead of time to say, hey, you know, I wanted, wanted to talk, wanted to make sure that you had a good sense of who these kids are, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's your chance to say, you know, do you, do you want to share some pictures? Do you have some slides? You know, and, and maybe they do, maybe they don't, either way. But if they are going to be doing screen sharing, then you want to practice that with them ahead of time. They may know it, all good, no worries. Or they may be folks who do things like this, like, okay, okay, so I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to share my screen now. It kind of gets old to listen to after a while. So, you know, one of the things you can do in, in the check is just be like, okay, when I, when I bring you in and you smile and say, hey, kids, it's great to see you. I'm going gonna, gonna to show you a few things. While you're saying that, do the screen share, like choose your, choose your window and do the screen share so that you can kind of seamlessly move into it. That kind of works better for everybody. You're working to hold kids' attention, right? So that's a part of it. Um, you also want uh, the, the folks to 
understand that there are some limitations. Like sometimes somebody who does speak in a lot of classes has a video to share. Video doesn't tend to go very well through, say, Zoom or, or any of these other tools. You know, like if you send a link ahead of time and they watch it ahead of time, that's a different matter. But, but if you're showing a video through this, it tends not to work pretty well. All right. A little choppy there, you know, in Zoom, there's an opportunity when you share a screen to say optimize for video, but still. So, so think in terms of, well, what, what are the alternatives? You could show it separately. Uh, you could have them play the video. And instead of like having the audio uh, happen with a video, that could actually just be a background visual while the person's speaking, which is a good move. Uh, additionally, you, you, can, you can say, look, can we do this without showing the video? And if, if they have no problem, then all good. Uh, now, you might also ask them, is it okay if I record? I know I've got a couple of kiddos who are sick and they're not gonna be able to join us. Uh, you know, what do you think? And, and if they have no problem with it, great. You know, and just make sure that when you upload it uh, to, you know, to wherever you do, YouTube, Vimeo, wherever it might be, uh, that you, you choose, choose good options. Uh, so especially if your kids are, are visible on the recording, you're going to want to make sure that they're not uh, identifiable, right, uh, publicly actually being the point. So make it an unlisted one, you know, make sure that the kids who ask questions are on have, you know, there's waivers from parents about these kinds of things. That's, that's good stuff. Finally, make sure that, uh, that the, the kids are on top of what it means to, uh, to be prepared for them. So, so you're checking with the speaker to make sure they understand the audience. So these, these kids are this level, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've got a really tough class. You know, they, tend, they, they can be kind of rude, but, I, but you know, I'd love for you to share this message because, uh, because it may inspire one of them to see a possibility they hadn't seen before. You know, when speakers know that's the case, they're ready. And, and if, that's, if that's how the setup is for you, so, you know, I mean, okay, all good there. Now, preparing the kids ahead of time, there are, some, there are some great things you can do. Have them do some research on what this person does or who the person is or anything like that and start preparing some questions. Because if, you know, like we talked about before, Susan was saying, have questions ready to go. This is a really good move. And especially with your middle and high schoolers, if they've done some research and, and actually can dive in to get some more complex questions ready, that's really good for the speaker. Hey, wow, I was really impressed with the questions they asked, things like that. So, so when you do something like that, get, you know, give that a look. Okay, uh, they should practice as an audience, by the way, right? All right, guys, what if, what if we have the speaker talking to us and you're tired and want to yawn, what do you do, right? And, and you know, get, get them to like try to be as, as uh, circumspect as possible as they do that. You know, re remember, you know, that they're supposed to be muted and you, know, you can just practice it, you know, practice gets you a lot closer to perfect than not practice. Now, uh, for you, if you are new to this and you're gonna be hosting a guest, this is something you should practice. What does it, what does it mean to host a guest, especially if you're gonna record it? Think in terms of the little pieces. Hi everybody, it is so good to have uh, our class together and we have a speaker for you today. Maybe that's the first thing you say, just know what it is. And with your colleagues, connect and, and walk your way through that. So you got a sense of, yeah, yeah, we're gonna create a little show, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna create a little TV show, but it's online, blah, blah, blah. You know, those kinds of messages can be good fun for the kiddos at, at all ages. Uh, just like Susan was talking about with roles, this may be a really good opportunity for some of your kids to step in and be part of the, of the nature of the show, right? We would like to welcome you today to class, blah, 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 blah. You know, if this is coming from a kid, that's kind of cool. So that's a possibility as well. Finally, have a backup plan. So sometimes, you know, everything's ready. The kids are ready. You're ready. No speak. And why? Well, you don't know. Did they just forget? Is, is there a problem with their connection? Uh, you know, do, do, you, do you have something? Is there something else going on? Like there was a class over on the east side of the country that had arranged to uh, connect with a, a firefighter here in California at one point, right? And they were all so excited and everything like that. Time came, no show. Well, they were all, you know, kind of disappointed and everything. Well, well, actually it was during the wildfires and the person was actually completely busy helping fight the fires. So they did it later in the year and it worked out. But for, for the teacher to be ready to say to the kids, okay guys, well, we're not sure, but we'll find out and we'll come back to it. So have, have a couple of ideas that you can kind of toss out there, maybe a little extra research you've done, and that can make a big difference as well. 
All right, so Susan and I have some resources for you we want you to know. Uh, Susan, you mentioned ports, uh, and I think, that's, I think that's a wonderful program. I put that in my newsletter before, I love that. Uh, exploring by the seat of your pants is one of those, uh, one of those uh, sites where you go and you can find all kinds of things. They have so much going on at that site. I hope you'll give that a look. Skype in the classroom has a lot of possibilities. Uh, you can connect with folks there. They have all kinds of events that, that you, can, you can click into. Uh, and then there's a, I actually don't know how to pronounce it. We'll just say Nepri. I'm sure that's not it, but whatever. Um, and they have virtual industry jazz, things like this. And, and it, nor, normally they charge for it, but at the moment they say it's free through May. I really have no idea whether that's May 1st or May 31st or what. But if you follow the link to get in there, uh, then you'll be able to kind of see what offerings they have and see whether it's something you like. All right, so let's wind things down. Remember that what we're doing right now as, as educators, online educators, is that we're doing what we've done before, right? We care for our students. We know that they need us to be those stable adults who encourage them and believe in them. We care for their learning. We find ways to push them, even now, you know, to say, hey, that, you know, I like what you've done here. How would you take that to the next level? Those things are important, but they're hard to do when we're not up to speed ourselves. So we have to take care of ourselves, right? We have to be getting enough sleep and getting exercise and doing all those things that allow us to be creative at the moment some kid might need us to be creative. All right, so I will get plenty of info uh, to you about uh, the Next Vista newsletter comes out every month. Uh, the next one will come out in the next few days, so be ready for that. And we have contests about explaining different things creatively, uh, about service to others, and I have a blog called Inspiring Improvement that I hope you'll give a look, as well as a few books that I've written on making your teaching better, making your school better, and for leaders, a, a new one that came out in December called Technology, Teamwork, and Excellence, which are very quite short chapters that give you an idea of how to use particular kinds of technologies to make uh, the, the school where you work all the more personally and professionally satisfying for everybody. If you have some questions, we will be very happy to answer them. Susan and I stick around after we stop the recording in order to talk to the attendees about the different things that they've got going. We love doing that. But we will finish and then take time with them. We hope that if you are joining the recording, you'll, you'll see us again. Susan, finish us off. Thank you so much. This is such a fun topic because it is about connecting kids. And right now, more than ever, like kids don't necessarily need more technology. They need more connections. That's mm -hmm. why we are having distance learning. It's not about, okay, it's about trying to keep them from having learning deficits. But more importantly, we want to keep kids connected to school, connected to their community, connected to something, you know, and that's, that's what we can do. We can connect them to all kinds of parts of the world. Uh, connect them to humans in other places who have circumstances that are similar, but they're just from different places. True that. And when we do these, these activities across grade level webinars, our, our hope is that we're inspiring you to see possibilities you haven't seen before. You're welcome to stay in touch with us, send questions you have or ideas to, to me at rh at nextvista.org. You can find out what the, what the next webinars will be at tinyurl.com slash rh-webinars20. Uh, capitalization doesn't really matter with tinyurl, so feel free to do that however the spirit moves you. We hope that uh, over the course of what we've been doing today, you've gotten some ideas about how to say, all right, you know, this is something I'm gonna bring to my kids. I'm gonna bring in this, this person I know. We're, we're gonna try some different things. This is absolutely your time to try, right? experiment with what you do, figure out what, what kids uh, can, can get excited about, you know, check with them. Hey, do you guys know some, somebody who might want to talk to the class? I'd be happy to talk to them to see if, uh, if it might be a good match, right? Uh, never commit before you find that out. So with that, we will finish the recording uh, and we will look forward to hopefully seeing you either tomorrow with two ed tech guys, take questions and share cool stuff, or next week with our next activities across grade levels.